Yeah, and I think you made a really good point. We use that analogy all the time. Think of your website like your number one salesperson. Mm-hmm. It's it's more of a of a living, breathing thing that you need to nurture versus a just one time project that you kind of wash your hands of. So if if you're willing to pay a really good rock star salesperson a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, why aren't you willing to make the same investment in your website? Because it's out there twenty four seven. It's selling for you twenty four seven. Hello and welcome to another episode of Advancing Success. My name is Joe Sandine, and today we're talking websites, one of my favorite topics. Um, Today I have Sydney Crockett with me, who is our website team manager. And her and I are gonna have a little conversation here about um, how do I know I need a website? And then just kind of get into a lot of the different semantics and questions that you would be asking yourself to understand how that process should go and how to make sure that your website is successful. So Sydney, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. All right. So the first place where I want to start, I think a lot of business owners maybe don't even know how to determine whether they need a new website or not. Um, I I think back even myself with Onsharp over all these years, and a lot of times my my gauge for we need a new website is I'm bored with the design of it myself. And and I think I've learned that that's a huge mistake because just just because it's been three months and I'm and I think it could be different like that that has nothing to do with serving my customer and what's important to them. So let's let's just kick it off with a really high level question. How do I know what gauge should I use to determine that I maybe should be thinking about rebuilding a website of mine that's been out there for a while? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Uh, a lot of our clients come to us with a couple different um, needs when they're looking to build a new website or just having that overall question, do I need a new website? One of them is, has your business objectives changed? A lot of companies, they've been doing the same thing forever. And um, when you realign with your business objectives, maybe some of those um, products, services that you're offering, you're not offering anymore, or you're changing um, narratives on how you're trying to portray them. So that's a number one is your content and is your business objective still aligning with what you want to do? So maybe it's been two, three years and we're selling different products or maybe the mission and the vision of the company's changed yeah. and there, there's a lack of synergy maybe between who we are and who we portray ourselves to be on the website. Exactly. And I even think back to OnSharp. We haven't really changed our full business objectives, but we have changed some of the products and services that we're offering, like integrations, um, building software, custom development. We started off building websites, and now we're into this whole different space, which is great, and that's moved us forward. But how we talk about that on the website has changed drastically. We're not writing blog posts that are about social media posting and when's the best time. We're writing blog posts about how are you integrating with the softwares? Is your CRM talking to your website? And so even for us, we have changed that narrative. And so we've had to take an inventory and a look at how our site is portraying to others and our clientele. A second piece to that is, okay, have our big players in the game change? So have our industries that we're going after shifted? Are we trying to look for different clientele and different audiences because we're going to be telling a different story every time, right? We're not going to say and tell the same story to an ag tech company we are to a hair salon. Okay. Those are two different industries. And so for a lot of businesses, if those industries have shifted or those overarching business objectives, like we said earlier, have shifted, we need to start playing with that and saying, okay, how are we going to drive people down a page, right? That comes back to content. Content is another way that you're like, hey, I need to change up my website a little bit more. So aside from maybe business priorities changing, driving the why, what about the data? Like what data would you look at as far as traffic and analytics and that kind of stuff to determine like, hey, maybe we're not getting what we want out of our website and we could be doing better? Definitely. So I think when it comes to looking at the data, you want to look at your top contending pages. Um, so your homepage is obviously always going to be the first one. It's going to be the high performing, but you want to look at your products and services pages, your FAQ pages, your blog, and see if those are still serving you. If you're not getting any traction on them in the last year, or you're getting people bouncing drastically from your product pages, your services pages, 
and not getting a lot of clicks there, we might want to start reanalyzing how that page is um, outlining. And that's another initiative we need to kind of shift in. One thing I think is interesting is like when you think building a new website, I think most people would think I'm throwing away the old completely and I'm starting from scratch. But I know with like, like we do a lot of websites on WordPress and we use Elementor specifically as our like our page builder in the framework. Um, I've found that it's quite easy now in today's world to not like even if you're thinking you're redoing the site, not literally having to start over from scratch, like you're maybe just picking a new template and a new design. How does that normally kind of play into the process or not plan? Do you find that you do that a lot with clients where it's taking what they have and just maybe kind of reskinning it and reorganizing things? Or are are you typically always kind of starting from ground zero and building up? When clients come in, there's three different clients that we have um, when it comes to content, because a lot of the times the content is pretty good, but it's how it's organized and how it flows. So we have clients that come in with no website. So we write a brand new website. We have clients that come in with hey, I like my content, but I think it could be reorganized. I think it could flow a little bit better. And we want a little bit more optimization, visualization help from an SEO standpoint. Then we have clients that come in and they're like, we haven't redone this website in 10 years. No one has touched it. We need a whole wash. Like we need you to come in, help with SEO, get the strategy going. But I would say most of the time our clients are that number two. They're somebody that just needs help reorganizing implementing a strategy and understanding and pulling everything together from who's your target audience, what's your tone, what's your SEO look like, and pulling it all together under one roof. So I think that's what we help do a lot with a lot of our clients. Um, But when somebody's getting ready to build a new website and looking to do that, maybe number two, just reorganize, I always say like, again, I'm going to go back to business objectives, look at what is your main objective service or products that we're going after. Then let's look at you know, what's the tone? Are we trying to be like playful and fun and have really talk to somebody? Are we trying to be very business um, oriented, very formal? Like, what does that look like? And does that showcase all throughout? Because the fun thing about writing a new website or updating a website over time, multiple people are probably doing it. And the same tone is not going to be done when you're updating your website throughout the years. Um, so I think that's really big to go back on. And then reorganizing and ad- utilizing SEO is huge. So these aren't the days anymore where you just put keywords on the page and you're just automatically going to rank. There's big players in the game. It's more of how can we utilize keywords and really what we're trying to get after to showcase to the client, hey, this is what you have. Because at the end of the day, users are lazy. I'm one of those users, and I just want to know where I need to go on a page within the first 10 seconds. And so that's just identifying and really identifying key aspects to have somebody flow down a page. I think SEO is a big thing that companies care a lot about. They maybe don't totally understand what all goes into it, but I I think we all generally have fairly high expectations. Like if I'm going to build a new website or put work into my website – one of my drivers is, oh, I want to be on page one of Google or I want to get more traffic. We know as website developers that it takes time. It, it doesn't happen overnight. How do you manage those expectations and how do you set appropriate expectations with a client who's wanting to push and rank better but helping them understand like this is a journey, this is a process. It's not going to just instantly happen at the snap of a finger. Definitely. So SEO is the fun topic. Um, It's continuously pushing our industry forward. But I think the expectation is everyone is still in the mindset of SEO from years ago, where you just put keywords, right? I like to cut those expectations right on our first kickoff call because clients come in, even in the sales process, clients come in saying, I want to rank at number one for this. That's so great. But if you don't have a long term strategy for that, you're not going to get and nothing's going to come fruitful out of that because long term strategies for anything are how you succeed and you keep pushing the needle forward. With that being said, I really put expectations to the client saying, hey, we are going to help your visibility. We are going to make sure from a technical and on page standpoint, you are standing where you want to in the SEO game. But if you want a long form strategy, we need to talk more because 
you have to generate content. You have to know your business objectives, what you're truly going after, and you need to set those sites. So, so do you think that search engine optimization and driving tra- traffic is just a whole different project in itself? Oh, for sure. I think when it comes to specifically our website process, we get you ready and your visibility, and we make sure that nothing's going to drop off after doing a website with us. But we also help tailor you for that process and saying, hey, we're, we have all the keys to the kingdom for you. It's time for you to go and unlock all the doors. Because if you're not going to do that and you're not going to have the long form strategy, your SEO is just going to sit there. So, so if I was going to make an analogy building a new website compared to a, a, a physical store is kind of like renting space, setting up the store, putting all your inventory in it, getting it all clean and pretty and looking nice. But then at the end of the day, to get people in the store, you have to market and promote yourself and get like in our world, get content out there that's going to get people to come into the physical store. Is that a fair analogy? I think it is. And this is one that I give to all of our clients for SEO. SEO is like working out, right? You work out one day, you don't work out for 30 more days, you're not going to be in the best shape of your life, right? But if you are doing marathon or half marathon training and you work out every day, you continuously push and push, your body's going to change and you're going to change and you're going to hit that goal. But again, if I start back at ground zero and I work out one day and don't work out for 30 days, I'm not going to have this like rock star abs. But if I work out every day, for 30 days, I'm going to have that body. That's a good analogy. I've never, I've seen those analogies on social media where they talk about if you go to the gym and you work out and you look in the mirror and the next day, what will you see? Nothing. You work out a second day, what will you see? Nothing. So at the beginning, you feel like you're not making any progress, but then you look in the mirror three months, six months, nine months down the road, you're going to start to see change. And I think that has shifted a lot of our clients' expectations as well, because even in a lot of our proposals, we don't say we're going to help you rank. We say we're going to help you with visibility because we are. We're going to make sure that you have, again, the keys to the kingdom to then go unlock all the SEO doors. But it's once we give you those keys, you need to go out and be fruitful with them and actually start unlocking the doors and creating content and thinking strategically for that long-term goal of SEO and actually starting to optimize your local and your regional SEO. So I think I think what's interesting about budgeting for a website, I, I see it, I see two sides to it. One is if you're not thinking a lot about d- deeply about the content and you're simply thinking, I'm redesigning this website to restructure my content, to have a new look and feel. I think there's a pretty simplistic way to budget for that. Like, because that's mostly um, design work, a little bit of content work. You're not thinking real deeply about like crazy user experience expectations. I think you get into a whole new different world when you really start looking at, um, maybe something that's, a a, a critical objective of your business. Like I'm, I'm maybe in the e-commerce space or I'm building out a landing page that, that I'm going to be driving, thousands of people to and could be generating millions of dollars worth of revenue. I think when you get into that world, Mm -hmm. now budgets become a whole different conversation because more of the budget now I think is driven by coming up with the right content. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's producing videos. Maybe it's like you're producing so many more sophisticated content components that are going to drive whether that website or that page on the website is going to be successful. What? How would you elaborate on, I, I think, the difference between those two concepts, one which is kind of really rudimentary and fairly basic, mm-hmm. one guess I think just way more advanced and the budgets would be just nine day different. I think when we talk about budgets, ask yourself, are you trying to turn a pamphlet into a website or are you trying to generate a website that is going to be a new salesperson? Because there's two different roads on that. The one where you're just trying to turn your website from a brochure to a website, that's great. That's pretty like rudimentary. That's almost that's almost like the that maybe just the foundational yes. building block. And then you need to build and from that point. Yes, you do. But some clients aren't there yet, right? They're just like, we need to get out there. We need to put our digital footprint there. And we need to turn this brochure that we've had for 10 years into a website, have a contact us page and be good. That's great. Your budget, then it's still, you're going to need 
a decent sized budget for that, but you're not looking for that whole strategy piece. So it's going to be a little bit less than that. But when you're looking to drive sales, you're looking to interact with people, you're looking to actually have a newsletter that's going to be fruitful for you on your website. That's where kind of that component of a bigger budget comes in because your strategy, how users are coming into your website, more of the data analytics needs to be reviewed. Like how are people bouncing? How do people come into this page? How do they flow through my website? Um, and a lot more pieces and components come together because there's more strategy involved. Even from a user experience side, we're probably going to talk about incorporating a map or functionality pieces. How can this um, roll into your CRM system? How can it roll into your ERP system at some points if we get into the e-commerce space? A lot of it really in that conversation starts to drive when we talk about how can this benefit you and automate some of your systems. Yeah. And I think you made a really good point. We use that analogy all the time. Think of your website like your number one salesperson. Mm -hmm. It's it's more of a of a living, breathing thing that you need to nurture versus a just one-time project that you kind of wash your hands of. Mm -hmm. So if if you're willing to pay a really good rock star salesperson a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, why aren't you willing to make the same investment in your website? Because it's out there 24-7. It's selling for you 24-7. It has the ability to generate so much opportunity and so many leads. And it's it's kind of crazy that more businesses don't think of it that way. I think there's a lot of untapped potential that companies just don't end up getting out of their website. Well, and I think there's a shift still going on now. But back in the day, you had advertisement and then local newspaper, you had a radio ad. And I'm not saying traditional marketing isn't still here and needed, but now we're shifting at, you're trying to touch a user or a customer at any point, at any point, whether that's traditional, whether that's on Google ads, whether that's naturally on SEO or word of mouth, but your website's starting to be your focal point. I, when I'm looking for a new hairdresser, a new hair salon, or someone, I'm going to the website first and seeing their reviews. I'm going to see who I'm actually going to be talking to. Or if I'm looking to learn more in an industry, specifically maybe about SEO, I'm going to their top experts. I'm going to their websites and seeing, okay, what do they have to offer? What, can I get to what I need to quickly? Even restaurants, if I want to get to their menu and I have, have a terrible experience now because I can't find their menu on that website, I'm frustrated and I have negative like connotation to this restaurant just because I can't find it. And that goes back to, yes, I'm a lazy user, but more users and more individuals are starting to think how I am as I want to get the information when I can, how I want to. And if it's hard and I can't find it within the first 10 seconds on your website, I'm leaving. So, Sydney, what would you say are the most common mistakes that businesses make when they move forward and build out a website, the things that really end up biting them in the end? A couple of mistakes that clients don't do at the beginning would be not having a state of the union. So not talking to everyone in the organization that this website may impact. So if you're a marketing director and you haven't talked to sales Marketing and sales right now are coming together in a lot of places in our industry. So if you're not talking to them and seeing how this could impact um, how they sell, how they're selling, that would be huge because your content may differ from how a salesperson is talking and then they get to the website and there's a disconnect there. Some other individuals at the company or CEO, what's their main objectives and not talking to your leadership team on saying, hey, where do you want this to go? What is something in our 10-year plan, our three-year plan that we're trying to hit? So not knowing those business objectives and having a clear, concise route on what leadership wants as well. Some other misconceptions or mistakes that individuals make is coming into that content generation meeting unprepared, not having a vision at all, and really going back and forth with, all right, do I need to make the decision or am I just going to give all the trust to my vendor and let them guide me through this process? I think for a lot of the time, our clients come in and really trust us because we do have knowledge in the industry. We've been around for 24 years. So they trust us in that and trust our strategy. But we do have some clients that want to be more involved, which is amazing. 
But sometimes they get in their own way at the end of the day because they're also trying to do all these other digital marketing or marketing efforts on top of this web design. So I think just some mistakes that individuals make are not coming prepared, not having the key individuals in the company involved, at least at the beginning of the strategy process. And then at the end, kind of going back and forth on, oh, do I like it? Do I like how this page is designed? And not giving good feedback and detailed feedback on really what they're wanting. How do you keep a business from, I'm going to say, tweaking to death their website design in the process of building something new? Because I'm sure it can be very tempting Mm -hmm. to get kind of close to the finish line. And then you start having two, three, four, five, ten people review where things are at. And now everyone's going to have their own opinion of this button should look like that. And this page should be designed like this. How do you, how do you keep the project from going off the rails when you get to that point so that you can get this thing out the door? Trying to keep a project on rails while still having a client that wants to be heavily involved and maybe has a lot of critiques. What we've done over the years in our process is start that at the beginning. So when we're doing content generation, we are having the client look at everything that we're writing and just saying, okay, from a content and a tech standpoint, this is great. We finalize this. We're ready to go in production. But even before that process, we have a lot of our clients look at themes. We propose a couple by just understanding their brand, who they're going after, and other sites that they like and taking that to account. I think adding, having a theme and having a framework for them to look at before we even go into content dev helps them visualize a lot more of what they could have. And then that's what we use in content writing as well. So when we're writing, we're also looking at the theme and components and how a lot of this content can go to play together because we build websites, content first, design second, because the content generates and leads the design of the website always. So we make sure to articulate that to our clients. But as we are very visual people, we understand that clients want to know how this content's going to fit or how this fun motion can be added to the site. So we try to mitigate a lot of that at the beginning with expectations. And so when we go into revisions, it's not these little critiques. It's like, hey, can we have this blue Can we have this red? And it's more of those instead of text and big design aspects. Well, and I, and I think sitting there and, and tweaking to death, the dumb little things on a page, like the color of a button, I think that's, I think letting your personal opinion get in the way can be very detrimental. I think you have to look at the data and that's why we do things like AB testing. So like I'm out of a page where I say, okay, I'm not sure if this title should say this or that, or this button should be what color, or even like what should the call to action be on the button. I think you have to use A-B testing Mm -hmm. to truly determine what's better. I I think just too much, we as individuals, we we think we know what's best, right? Because of our personal opinions on things. And I think it's a dangerous spot to get in and you can end up spending a lot of money making unnecessary tweaks to things that you should just let the data tell you what to do. Exactly. And I'm going to say this, hopefully to the masses, no one cares what the color of your CTA button is. And if it is, contact us or get connected. Just put it there and see what's fruitful and go from there. Um, Like you're saying, A-B testing is huge, but also get started, get it on the page. I have so many clients that We go back and forth and it delays maybe for two to three weeks of their website going live because we're tinkering with a contact us page or we're tinkering with an H2 heading. And at the end of the day, that can be updated right when it goes live. But let's get it out there and let's see what's going to be fruitful for us. And there's a there's a marginal rate of return when you're messing with the last 10 percent of something. You just got to get it out the door and then see what happens. And exactly. And I think to that, too. We talked earlier about budgets and we talked about how do you know what you should go into a website development project with. I think not only thinking, okay, what should my budget be for website development? The second question to that is what should my budget be after? Should I, if I go with a web vendor or if I do it internally, I need to know who do I need on my team or who as a vendor do I need to make sure the maintenance is updated because websites are always fun. They always have little updates that are needed. And if you're really trying to get this SEO game going, you need to make sure that you're doing these small updates. Yeah. It's a common mistake that businesses will put all of their budget into the building and launching of the website and they leave nothing 
for ongoing marketing, ongoing content development, ongoing tweaks and adjustments. And so then they end up at a place where they just don't have any gas left in the tank to do what I think really matters once you start learning how people are are using the site. So how do you how do you recommend that they break up the budget then so that they don't get stuck in that spot? Definitely. I would say put at least 60 to 70% of your budget towards your website redesign or your website development project. Put 20 to 30% for that year. Because again, this is just a starting point. And if you're truly having a strategy that's going to be implemented after for SEO, for digital marketing efforts, everything's going to come back to the website. Because again, this is Mm -hmm. your new salesperson. This is another person on your team, your website is, to push your needle forward. So let's make sure that that person or that website has room to grow and has availability. Same thing. If you have a new salesperson on your team, you're not just going to let them sit there and not have them do any training, right? You're going to have them probably do quarterly trainings. You're going to want them to maybe go to a couple trade shows. You're putting money into them. So why wouldn't you put money into this additional salesperson that is going to be fruitful and just drive leads without having to pay for benefits or anything like that? Yeah, I normally tell people, you know, let's just speak high-level numbers. Let's just say you you have a budget of $100,000 for your website. I normally tell people you need to be prepared to spend another 20 to 30% of the initial budget every year to continue nurturing the site, tweaking it, adding new content. So if you're going to spend 100 grand, you should probably be prepared to spend 25 or 30 grand a year continually working and adding to the website and making sure that it's continuing to bear fruit for you. No, exactly. Just because, again, we want to keep pushing it forward. The content's going to be updating. You might have a new vision for a landing page. Say that you have a new initiative or product that this quarter that you want to push. You're going to have a landing page for that. You're going to have a CTA. You're going to have a contact us form. You're going to have so many other pieces in motion that you're going to want to do after. Also, when you're in a project, we try to make sure this doesn't happen all the time, but it still does. You're going to find all these ideas. Like I, That's why I love working with clients because we get in the middle of the project and we start strategizing more in the content dev piece. And we just start talking about all these things they could be doing and they just start dotting them down. And we're like, all right, we're not going to do them inside this project because of scope of work. But this is fruitful for you after. And you, I've had clients come back to me and saying, oh my gosh, you just give me 10 more things that I can do after this project. And- At the end, which we do it here, and I highly, highly recommend clients either doing it for themselves or finding a vendor, when you're done with your website, every year or year and a half, you should be doing a website audit. Whether it's you or another vendor, look at your website, take inventory, look at your analytics, see how your Google Search Console is doing, and see if your authority has moved and keep moving and keep updating from there. I think it's a really good starting point for clients to say, okay, what can I do from here? Well, Sydney, thank you for spending time today. It was a great conversation. Obviously we covered a lot of areas of the website process, how to how to decide if it's the right time to build a site. If you do decide, you know, what are some of the things you need to be thinking about? And then even diving into some of the deeper stuff like content, SEO, marketing automation. There's just so much that goes into, um, I think, building and running and maintaining a website that can help your business really take a step forward. So uh, thank you for joining us today. And until next time, we hope you see wild success in your business adventures.